That's right, I'm not really a fan of Bali, but don't get me wrong though, I've been to Bali a couple of times before COVID, I did a couple of the usual touristy things, I enjoyed myself, I had fun, but ever since after COVID, it feels like the entire world is headed to Bali, it feels very crowded, everyone's doing the same things, and if you know me, I don't really like to follow the crowds, but here I am back in Bali, but for a totally different experience, and I don't know what to expect, but I'm pretty stoked. Let's do this. Meet Justin, the legendary Bali fixer driver who's able to make anything happen. You want a proposal? He's got it. Need to find the best Barbie girling? He's got it. And from what I've heard, he's the king of finding off-bitten spots in Bali. And I'm here to discover the other side of this popular paradise. Okay, for our first order of business, a two-day, one-night adventure at Nusa Penida, a popular coastal island off the main island of Bali. Alright, so we're here at Nusa Penida. But we're not going to do the usual stuff because I've already done like, you know, the Kalinking Beach and whatnot. So we're going to explore the other side of Nusa Penida. Let's go, Justin. <laughs> oh my gosh. So this, we're right now at the Goa Giri Temple. So this is a cave temple and this is the opening, oh my gosh. Here we go. People with claustrophobia, beware. <laughs> okay. Okay. Woo. <laughs> La Ooh, it's huge. It's really huge. Oh my gosh. <laughs> the entrance was but the cave right here is huge. So this is a temple in a cave. Actually not a temple, but there are five temples. A mix of Hindu and Buddhist temples. The very first thing I want to say is when I saw your photo, you look super young, like me. <laughs> is this a student? And then he's like the legendary Bali fixer. I was like, I'm, s I'm so interested in you. Like not in a wrong way, <laughs> but like, wow, this guy is cool. Like, how old are you? Uh, no, I'm already quite old. <laughs> oh. I'm 28. 28? Yeah, 28 years no old. No way! <laughs> I was guessing like maybe 23 <laughs> or 22. You so much. Really appreciate Shit. it. You're like me. <laughs> so right now I'm at a seaweed farm. It's full of seaweed. They are harvesting seaweed. And this is the boss, big boss. Hello. Hello. <laughs> How long does it take to grow the seaweed? 30 days for it to be ripe. Okay, that's uh, not too long, but still I think a lot of hard work. So basically what's happening is during the low tide, the workers or the farmers need to splash water onto the seaweed to prevent it from drying up. There's a lot of work under the hot sun. <laughs> it's very hot. This feels, doesn't feel like seaweed. Yeah. It's like a green, I don't know, jelly. jelly. And you use it for like soap. Like and for scrub, and scrub. you can also eat it. This is seaweed keropok. Wow. Expecting the seaweed to be green in color, but it's like a normal so keropok color. So it goes from this, dried out, and then keropok. Interesting. Mm. <laughs> it's like normal keropok. <laughs> That is nice. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye. <laughs> when did you start doing like driving in in Bali or doing a being a fixer? Oh, it's already from two thousand and seventeen. Right. Already six years, right? Six years. Yes. yes. What What's the main motivation for you to start this after you graduated, after you did your studies? Mm, the main reason because I like traveling. Uh, but when I traveling, I also looking like the local things. Then I thinking like when I go back to. Bali, why not I try to open my own, which is 
that's what I looking for when I going to abroad. <laughs> Gosh, look at that blue as water. I'm at Diamond Beach. It's on the east side of the island <laughs> and it's so beautiful. I think it's quite famous around here, but it's still really nice to check this out. It's very, very bumpy. It's very quiet. There's no one here. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited. I just hope I don't fall off. Oh, I look crap. Ah, I look crap. Yeah, for real, for real, for real. Oh, yeah, well, fuck, fuck, fuck. <laughs> Let me stretch. <laughs> This sunset spot is legendary. It is epic, guys. Ooh, beautiful, and it's so quiet here. And right after this, I was joined by some locals who offered me a couple of Nusa Panita grapes. Like one, yeah? yeah. Ooh, sour. <laughs> yeah! Nusa Panita grapes, guys. Ooh, the texture is a bit like mangosteen. I like to show the people how the local things in yep. Bali in here only going to the touristic main, mainstream Bali not only for the like a tech picture yep. we have a lot of things to see which is not only the sightseeing but we have a lot of culture we have a lot of local things which is you cannot find in your country <laughs> our travel agency mostly all the tour is like off, bitten off the path I can tell from this location <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> So late right now, it's totally dark. In Justin, we trust. <laughs> Should be safe, right, Justin? <laughs> it depends by your luck. By luck, oh my god. <laughs> so after some time driving in the dark, Justin brought me to his friend's food stall to have a very simple fried chicken meal. Cheers. <laughs> my hair. When's the last time you cut your hair? <laughs> Three months. Three months? Yeah. Three months. Yo. <laughs> <laughs> and here only 5 USD <gasps> Like 50,000 Oh, chicken is good Morning Justin! <laughs> good morning! So the next day, I told Justin I wanted to see some manta rays And so he brought me to see some manta rays Buggy everyone, good morning Today, we are going for snorkeling But not just any normal snorkeling okay? We're going to find manta rays We're going to manta bay to find some manta rays. My track record of finding marine animals is not very good, but manifest. Manta ray, manta ray, manta ray. Manta rays, here we go. No manta. So even though I didn't get to see any manta rays, I finally fulfilled my dream of swimming with sea turtles for the first time. I was just screaming inside, looking at the turtles swimming so gracefully in front of me while being surrounded in a school of jellyfish. I am totally not freaking out. I finally saw the sea, the sea turtle. That's not too bad. Oh, and there, the, there was a sea of jellyfish and I think I got stung a couple of times. Oh my god. Ooh, that was beautiful. At least we got to see a sea turtle. Woo. The other snorkeling sites were beautiful as well. It's got vibrant corals, abundant marine life, and clear blue ass waters. Wow, 
Oh, so this is Justin's souvenir shop. Right now, I have a souvenir shop. The souvenir shop is like uh, made when I jobless in the Corona mm. times. Mm. So on the time, they still have a lot of uh, domestic tourists who still traveling mm. around the island. Thankfully, it's like nothing to lose. I mean, like mm. uh, I have a saving, so I'm just thinking like if just. Uh, stay like this the money will go so why not just put all the money <laughs> to the other business and then luckily it's work <laughs> i didn't feel scary because i'm uh, confident with myself mm. Ooh, i have nice. the skill i have anything lo- so if it's filed just do it again <laughs> mm. Ooh, i like that <laughs> i like that i think more people should yeah. own that <laughs> thank you thank you Yay. let's go justin thank you guys <laughs> <laughs> Women, take note, you cannot come here during menstruation. Oh, crap. Kaguyangan, waterfalls. Look at the view. The climb down here is no joke, man. What about the climb up? I don't want to imagine that. <laughs> so this place isn't exactly a waterfall but more of a natural spring in a cave to soak in and take beautiful photos. Are you happy, like, after six years? Like, are you still enjoying doing this? Are you happy doing this job? Yes, to be honest, like, uh, the other business is more profitable, but mm. this job, like, I like to meet new people. Sometimes I said to myself, like, uh, my car is like my classroom because uh-huh. you meet a lot of people from all around the world. Right. You learn everything that from all around the world, at least we learn something from them. It's like a sharing... sharing cultural them. exchange. That's right, right. cultural ex- exchange. And you enjoy that. <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay, even though it does not earn you as much as your other businesses. If you love what you do, I think people will people can feel it as well. So this is a Bali specialty. When you're here, definitely have Bali guling, man. Like, I've been craving for this since the last time I went to Bali. <laughs> There's like the pork cracker, the pork skin, minced pork, various kinds of minced pork, and then there's the pork soup. <laughs> the pork cracker. It's like eating lard, but it's not lard. That's so flavorful. Man, we should have Barbie Gooding in Singapore, man. <laughs> Although it will never be as good, but even the soup is amazing. Ooh, the soup, it just packs a punch. So flavorful. Got all kinds of ingredients inside, and it's spicy. Wow. And this is even not even the best Barbie Gooding yet. I can't imagine the best one. Right, it's time for canyoning. Let's go. <laughs> Sayonara. Canyoning was fun. Canyoning is fun. Everyone can do. On day four, I found myself at the quaint countryside of Cinnamon. Known for beautiful, authentic rice terraces minus the crowds, with the majestic Mount Agung standing tall in the background. Selamat pagi. We're going for Rice Terrace Trekking in Cinnamon. So I just fell into the mud, into the rice fields. Oh, it's all wet inside. Mm. 
Doesn't feel good. Soggy, muddy socks in my shoes. <laughs> that was a tough hike down. Oh, why, Yang? Why? Why you make me do this? <laughs> Cinnamon Silver, really really cute, it's run by the entire family ever since COVID came about. Dad had to go home and then they decided to set up a shop to create silver making workshops and now it's like so popular. Really happy for them. I'm at Cinnamon Silver making a silver ring. Yeah, I'm Made. Made. Yeah. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Nice. I make the silver uh, 35 years. We are trying to melt the silver and then make it into a ring. Making Bali. Making Bali. And look at my pretty, pretty ring that I just made. Very shiny. Surprisingly, I found this silver making workshop to be really enjoyable and relaxing. Yeah, it's it's very heartwarming to know about this family's inspiring story, how they came out of COVID, and I truly felt like I was right at home with them. Silver and silver. Hi. Bye. 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 Peaceful, the calmness, I yep. like it. <laughs> Every time you come to Bali, yep. it's gonna be a different experience. That's right. So Bali is like home to you. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> wow. The love is real for Bali. <laughs> right, makan. <laughs> Today we are having sate koko, kako, sate kako. This is the snail from the rice field. It's not from the sea, it's from the Balinese rice field. Interesting. And uh, they put it into the satay and... Mm. <laughs> the sauce is good. Yeah. It's like eating escargot on a skewer with chili sauce. Mm. Good recommendation from Justin. Again. Overall, it's been refreshing to see and experience this side of Bali and to really connect more with the locals. And I can see why people love Bali. It's not just about the Instagram-worthy shots, but the warmness and the friendliness of the Balinese people. Whew. It's truly unlike any other. Last question though. Do you have a girlfriend? <laughs> <No>. <laughs> not yet. <laughs> not yet. <laughs> Too busy for a girlfriend. Yeah. So I want to give a huge shout out to Sick Sophie for providing this experience for me. All of the activities that you saw in this video is done through Sick Sophie. So Sick Sophie is basically a platform to book authentic experiences and to do the less touristy things. Make sure you check the links in the description of all the activities that are done through Sick Sophie. The next one, I'm going to do a two-day, one-night camping experience. I Camping in Bali? <laughs> so stay tuned for that. If you like this video, do give this a thumbs up, it really really helps and subscribe to the channel to stay tuned for the next video. I'll see you in the next adventure. Peace!